Hey Brian, if I could have two of the tunas and the four swordfish, that'd be great. Hello and welcome to the Lee Calm Healthy Living Kitchen. I'm Mary Millard and I love fresh fish. Eating seafood is a great way to cut down on fat and stay healthy. So today we'll be speaking with Liam Kelly of North Shore, part of Curtsy Food Service, to talk about what to look for when you're buying fish at your local grocer. Then we'll get cooking with a beautiful plate, swordfish with tomatoes, capers, and olives. Then we'll make some quick and tasty fish tacos that you won't soon forget. Hey, thanks, Brian. So let's get cooking. Hi, everybody. I just reeled in a real Irish fisherman. I have Liam Kelly with us tonight from North Shore Seafood, and we are gonna talk seafood tonight. So Liam, thank you for joining us tonight. You're what welcome. a pleasure. You're so welcome. tell me a little bit about the fish you have here tonight. Anyway, well, let's start with the salmon. Sure. This, I truly believe, is one of the best salmon yes. in the world. It's actually a Scandinavian salmon that's raised in a very small group of islands called the Faroe Islands up in the North Atlantic. Okay. Up in the North Sea. Okay. And then they ship it to Scotland and process it in Scotland because the islands are so small they don't really have a lot of facilities there. So the it's a farm raised it's salmon. A far it's a farm raised salmon but it's mm -hmm. farmed in a different, anyone can Google this salmon, Google Faroe Island Faro, salmon, uh, F-A-R-O-E. F-A-R-O-E. This salmon okay. is about 98% as close to wild as possible. Okay. I have actually cooked this salmon against Copper River and wild Alaskan salmon okay. and other salmons and it this salmon tastes better. So I'm looking at this uh, beautiful filet mm -hmm. and I see the belly fat yes. here. So, and that is the highest that's the fattiest yes, part. Yes, that's of the, the fatty. Now, in most other salmons, you would want to cut this belly fat piece off because it doesn't taste good. Okay. Because that's the salmon that has the icky fat, is yes. the easiest way okay. to explain this. Okay. This salmon has the good fat. Okay. This is sushi grade. You can eat it raw. Okay. I absolutely love it. Okay. I have to say, I personally would probably still cut off that belly fat if I was going to cook that salmon. And yeah, I'm, well, that's anyway, you. that's. That's me. Everyone right. is a little different. Everyone's a little different. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? We're going to be cooking swordfish. the swordfish. This is swordfish, tonight. and we bring in the swordfish whole okay. ourselves. We buy them whole. We buy them right off of some of the guys that I know on the East Coast. Some okay. of, a lot of it comes from New Jersey. New Jersey. A lot of it's off of New Jersey, Barnegat. A lot of those guys in the swordfish shows on TV. Okay. Uh, we buy our fish from them. And it, I mean, there are probably stories in the, in the industry where you talked about temperature doesn't mean everything because temperatures could vary depending on if you're not coming from a um, reputable purveyor. So exactly. just because you get it at the right temperature exactly. doesn't mean they've been. It could have been laying on the deck of a yeah. fishing boat, and yeah. I've seen it myself. I've yeah. been a fisherman for years. Some guys will leave fish lay on the deck for 12, 14 hours in right. the baking sun. Right. So yeah, you receive the fish, and it's down to temperature. But it laid on the deck of a boat for right. 18 hours, not temped, and you get this fish, and you wonder why the quality is really bad and the fish is really white. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that to me is a beautiful piece of swordfish because of the color. You can see the bloodline is nice, and well, yes. we removed most of the bloodline, but the bloodline is pink. Pink. The fish is very, very shiny. Mm -hmm. So if, obviously, shiny fish means fatty fish. Okay. So yes. that's that's a beautiful New Jersey fish right there. Okay, love it. Um, one of my favorite fish, and I know one of your favorite absolutely, fish, we absolutely, have cod. Yes, this is actually, believe it or not, an Alaskan cod. Okay. Um, very sustainable. Mm -hmm. Caught up in the Bering Sea. Are up in the Gulf of Alaska also. Okay. Again, caught with hooks. Okay. Not caught with nets. All right. And this product comes comes to us filleted, just like this. Okay. We sell we sell it in three different sizes. We have a six to eight ounce fillet, an eight to ten ounce fillet, and a ten to twelve ounce fillet. So um, let me just and I, I love this. So I've I've kind of moved from that fish I talked about earlier um, to this to, to this cod because it's so it's. It's meaty, it's so uh, pure and fresh tasting, it's a nice white it's, fish. It's the best way of what I say to people about this is this is the real deal, it's all natural. It's, There's yeah. no chemicals in it, there's no sodium tripolyphosphates, that's as real as it gets. So, so tell the viewers tonight how they know what are some things that they can look for to see if they're getting a high quality fish? You know, a, a lot of um, markets that we go into don't have the whole fish. You can't look to see if the eyes are clear mm -hmm. and, and and it's glossy and... I, I guess the best 
the, my best, my advice to the, to the public or to anybody watching mm -hmm. the show would be, first of all, trust your, your, whoever you're buying your fish from. Absolutely. Know who's selling you your fish. If you know if you're getting it off a reputable company. And, and if you have a good fishmonger or a good supermarket, a good restaurant, whatever, don't be afraid to ask the questions. Right. Is it domestic fish? How is it caught? Where did you get it from? Who sold it to you? Right. And if you never heard of this company, oh, well, it comes into us frozen. Does it say a product of China on the box? Or does it say a product of Norway? If it's a Norwegian haddock, it's probably a very good quality, high quality, Icelandic haddock, good haddock. Mm -hmm. Product of the United States is good. But if it says product of China on the box or something like that, it, okay. it's obviously not a very good quality well, fish. A lot of fish is produced in Chile also. It is, yes, and South is America. generally decent? Uh, the, fish, the, the, depending on, okay. depending okay. on the area that okay. it comes from. Okay. It all has to do with it all has to do with pre pretty much the supplier. Great. I, I have to say I 100% agree with you, Liam. Um, when I go into the market and ask for fish, I ask what came in today. Mm -hmm. That's I'm really sensitive when it comes mm -hmm. to I don't want anything even. I know fish can sometimes smell like fish, mm -hmm. but I really want it to smell more like the ocean. Right. So I ask what came in today, and mm -hmm. that's typically the fish that I get. Right. Um, you know, there is wonderful product available frozen, but again, we need to look where it's coming from yes. and, and just see where it's sourced. Read the labels. Read the labels. Read the la labels. Do your and, homework. And ask the, the experts behind the counter that are selling you the product. Ask the experts behind the counter that are selling you the products, and and um, if they don't know, then you know, ask someone else in the department. Because, Absolutely. Because somebody there should know. Absolutely. So. I mean, you know, when I when I talk about this salmon, the reason I focus on this salmon so much is it's so high quality, it's so high in fat, and it tastes. It doesn't taste fishy. Mm -hmm. Fish shouldn't taste mm -hmm. fishy. Mm -hmm. There's one salmon that's out there that's for I sale agree. and everybody sells and it's uh, they call it just Atlantic salmon. But if you do really do some more research into it, it's a farm raised salmon down in Chile okay. that has coloring added to it and everything. And, and I absolutely cannot stand that salmon. Okay. I just don't like it. Okay. It's just the quality is not there. so if you were out there. at a restaurant and got that, you would know it was that Absolutely. Salmon. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Ooh, you're yeah. a tough one. Um, hey, Liam, thank you so much. I really mm -hmm. appreciate thank your you coming by. Watch that hook. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, and thank you. And we're going to cook up some swordfish. So now we are gonna make a delicious swordfish dish. It has a little bit of a Mediterranean flavor. It has capers and olives in it, has some fennel, onion, garlic. So we're gonna start off by getting our um, pan nice and hot. I'm gonna put a little olive oil in it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the chopped onions. And actually, I should have let that olive oil heat up a little bit, to, to be honest with you, before I put in the onions. But I'm going to cook that for a minute. I'm also going to put in some chopped fennel. I want to show you what fennel looks like. This is a whole fennel. Um, it, it kind of looks like fresh dill on the top. Is it, It's an anise flavored vegetable. Um, sometimes it's in the grocery store uh, labeled as anise. Um, I call it fennel. So what? What you do is um, I typically cut off the top and then I cut the bulb, the fennel bulb, in half lengthwise. I have half of a bulb right here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting that. You can see there's a heart in the fennel. Um, I'm gonna cut out the fennel heart. Um, I'm so grisly, I'm cutting out the fennel heart. And I'm just gonna go ahead and chop it up. Move my little fish spatula, chop it up thin. And then I'm gonna chop it crosswise. That there. Go ahead and chop it crosswise. And it will break up into small pieces, as you can see. Okay. Nice. My cutting board's a little crowded tonight. All right. Go ahead, we'll add, um, the recipe calls for uh, chopped, one bulb chopped. So this is half and I'll put the, the remaining in. 
with the onion. I'm gonna turn it up to about medium. There's the rest of it. If you're gonna chop your fennel ahead of time, you can keep it from discolor, uh, discoloring or oxidizing by um, just putting it in a bowl of cold water with a half a lemon, some lemon juice in there. So I'm gonna go ahead, cook this for about 10 minutes till the onion and the fennel are uh, tender. In the meantime, I have four beautiful pieces of swordfish over here. Actually, I can count. I have five beautiful pieces of swordfish. I'm gonna go ahead and season them with salt and pepper. If you have fresh ground pepper, wonderful. And go ahead and turn these so I can season the other side with salt and pepper. There we go. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add some chopped garlic, about two cloves of garlic. Now remember the recipes are available on cookhealthytoday.com, but smells delicious. It's only gonna get better. I love all these flavors. Now it is not summer here in beautiful Erie, Pennsylvania, but if you wanna bring a little summer to your table, this is a great recipe um, because it has, um, it has the garlic, it has fresh basil, it has some black olives, it has some capers, a uh, little white wine, um, really, really delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic and we are gonna cook this some more. So the onion and the fennel are starting to get tender. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add a can of plum tomatoes. And I am going to use uh, just a metal spoon and break up the plum tomatoes. You could, I guess, use diced tomatoes. Um, I don't know, I tend to have plum tomatoes at home a lot, so I go ahead and break them up. There we go. Oh. Oh my gosh. I need a shield here. It's squirting all over. Okay, so you just want to kind of coarsely break them up. There we go. Stir it together. All right. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of white wine, a couple tablespoons of white wine, and some chicken broth or chicken stock. Canned is fine, add that to the mix. And we are gonna go ahead and cook this for about 10 more minutes. I'm gonna put a lid on. We'll go ahead and cook that. In the meantime, uh, I'm gonna start the swordfish. So I have a non-stick pan with just a little bit of olive oil in it. The olive oil is nice and hot. I'm gonna go ahead, the pan is um, about medium high. I'm gonna go ahead and take my swordfish and put it in the pan. Let's see. Sizzling up. There's not a lot of fat in the pan. We're gonna cook this swordfish about four minutes each side. And it should be done. And by that time, the sauce will be done and we'll go ahead and serve it up. Okay, so the sauce, you can see it's bubbling. It's been cooking. The onions and the fennel are tender. We're gonna add the last few ingredients. We have some capers. And we have some, I'm not gonna use all of these olives. But this is a nice niçoise olive. I think it's about a quarter cup of olives. And we have some fresh basil. Let me stir these in. 
The capers and the olives really add some nice color, texture to this dish. I'm gonna go ahead and just moments before we serve, which is now, I'm gonna go ahead and add the fresh. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do first is add, um, it's about one tablespoon of butter and that will add without adding a lot of butter. And you see there's not a lot of fat in this dish at all. This will add like a nice richness to the dish and flavor. And before I add the basil, I wanna go ahead and taste um, the dish. I'm gonna season it with some salt and pepper, which I have not done yet. Stir that in and then I wanna taste it. Great. Okay, we'll go ahead and add the basil. And this is a really, actually a really simple dish. If you, you know, keep some of these ingredients in your home, this is a, this is a, not that everybody has fennel in their home, but just pick up fennel. We all have canned tomatoes. Um, many of us have olives, capers on the door of our refrigerator. So this is a nice, easy recipe. I added the basil, brings out nice color. Go ahead and taste it. Mm, delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and check the swordfish. So I have turned the swordfish and it is golden brown on both sides. It's just about done. It's been cooking for about uh, four minutes approximately uh, on each side. Looks beautiful. The sauce is done as well. I'm just gonna switch those so I can put the sauce into the, uh, my serving dish. I'm gonna use a bowl here, which is nice when you have a dish like this where it has a little bit of a sauce, a little more liquid. This is really nice. Okay, so this recipe serves for, I have a big crew here tonight, so I did five pieces of swordfish, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the tomato, caper, and olive sauce right in the bowl. I am going to reach off camera, get my beautiful piece of swordfish, put it right on top, and I think we'll garnish that with a little bit of fresh basil. That is absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to try it. Enjoy. When the clock approaches 5 p.m., do you start thinking about what to have for dinner? Are you tired of using fast food as the answer? If so, try this old school trick that's back in fashion. Menu planning, take 10. Spending just 10 minutes mapping out your menu for the week will help you stay on track. If you have the ingredients for healthy meals at home, you probably won't want to order high calorie and high cost takeout. Menu planning is a great way to make sure you're eating a balanced diet and meeting your nutritional needs. And as every frugal cook knows, menu planning can save you time and money. You can have a big impact on your health and your budget just by eating at home more often. With menu planning, you know what your meals will look like and what you need to buy. That makes grocery shopping more efficient and cuts down on unplanned trips to buy one or two items. And with a grocery list in hand, a byproduct of good menu planning, it's easier to resist impulse purchases. Menu planning doesn't have to be complicated. To get started, jot down some of your favorite meals. Cooking for a family? Ask them to suggest menu ideas. For more inspiration, flip through cookbooks or check out recipe websites. You can even find sample menus and menu planning apps online. Plan several days or a week of meals at a time. Make sure to include side dishes as well as entrees and some healthy desserts too. When you have your menu plan filled in, create a shopping list of the ingredients you'll need. Some things to consider as you contemplate menu options. Think seasonal. What fresh produce is available this time of year? Is it salad season or soup weather? Shop your pantry. That can of beans in the back of the cabinet could be the starting point 
for any number of healthy meals. Mix things up. Keep the menu interesting by planning some meatless meals or substituting a breakfast for a dinner. We call it Brinner at my house. Alternate new recipes and old favorites. Get your fruits and veggies. As you plan each meal, keep in mind that vegetables and fruits should really cover half of your plate. Lean protein should cover about a quarter, and the rest of your plate should be whole grains. Prep items in advance. Make a soup on Sunday. Clean and cut up fruits and vegetables for easy on-the-go snacks and meals. Mealtime is a great way to connect with your family, friends, or even just yourself. Spend 10 minutes planning and start living your healthy lifestyle today. So a nice take on tacos are fish tacos. So today I'm gonna to make uh, fish tacos using fresh cod. I have two fillets here. Um, probably about a pound and a half, I would say. I put a little olive oil in my pan. My oven is preheated to about 400 degrees. Put a little salt and pepper, season them up. If it was sunny and warm outside, I would get the grill fired up and I would probably grill this cod. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, stick it in the oven behind me. Set the timer. Going to check it in about eight minutes. In the meantime, I have a creamy cilantro dressing that is really nice with these tacos. So I'm going to, you can use a blender. I have a small food processor right here. About a cup of mayonnaise. I'm using light mayonnaise. I prefer light over non-fat. Go ahead and put that in. I have about a half a cup of skim milk. I have some, a packet of dry ranch dressing, just like this, it's a one ounce packet. I'm gonna go ahead and put that around. I have two garlic cloves that are chopped up, minced, I would say. I'm gonna put that in there. I have about a quarter cup of green salsa. So I will tell you that if you buy salsa, this green salsa, it's also called Salsa Verde, um, you wanna taste it and make sure that it is not too spicy because there are some brands that are really spicy and can kill this dressing. So this is a nice kind of mild Salsa Verde. And I'm gonna put the juice, uh, about two tablespoons of fresh lime juice in. So actually that is a really nice juicy lime. So I think I'm just gonna put about half of it in. You saw all that go in. And I'm gonna put about a half a cup of fresh cilantro that I chopped up. I'm gonna put that in as well. And we're just gonna blend it until it comes into dressing consistency. So I'll put the top on, say a prayer, and let's see what happens. You want it to be pretty smooth. I'm gonna open the top and just run, oh, that looks nice. Run my spatula around the inside, give it another turn in the food processor. Wanna taste it for seasoning. Good. Actually, doesn't really, I'm gonna add a little pepper. Doesn't really need too much salt. I'm gonna add a little pepper, add a little bit of salt, and I'm gonna add some hot sauce, just for a little bit of fire. A couple drops of hot sauce, and you can adjust that how you prefer. Go ahead and give it a couple more turns. Great and that should be good to go. So we are gonna wait for the cod to finish baking, a couple more minutes, and then we'll put the tortillas together. In the meantime, um, I thought something that might be um, good with these uh, tacos is a little grapefruit. It's grapefruit season here, 
So I was just gonna go ahead and section some grapefruit. I'm gonna cut off the top and the bottom. You wanna try to get through that pith, the white pith, and um, go ahead and take your knife. This is kind of a big knife to do it, not real flexible, but it's working okay. And you're just gonna go ahead and cut off the skin of the grapefruit. And this is how they get those nice sections without any of the pith um, for different salads and desserts and things like that. So trying to take, remove as much of the white part as you can so you just get down to that beautiful ruby red grapefruit. I saw this recently. I saw these uh, a fish taco recipe with fresh grapefruit, and I thought, oh my gosh, that looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and use a paring knife for this portion, and you can see the veins going down from the uh, segments. I'm just going to cut on either side of those. So actually, I put them here on the cutting board because I want to cut them up a little bit. And then again, I'll go on the other side of this vein, just like this the membrane, I guess I should say, and take out that. Nice, those are really nice, beautiful, juicy segments of grapefruit. And then I'm gonna cut them into smaller pieces. And just gonna cut, just so they're nice to go on top of the taco. And put those out. I'll invite all my friends over so everybody can have a taco when we're done filming this. All right, so here's the grapefruit. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in a bowl. Grab one behind me. There we go. And fish should just be about ready. So the cod just came out of the oven. In the meantime, uh, on my gas burners, I took corn tortillas and just put them directly over the burners and warmed them up, got them a little bit of charcoal. So this is the basis. This is the shell for our um, fish tacos. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to create here. Get a couple spoons, very easy. You see all the condiments I have, I have some uh, cilantro, I have some avocado, some thin sliced radishes, we have some very thin sliced uh, cabbage, some scallions that are lengthwise, uh, kind of julienne, and then we have some chopped scallions and some uh, grapefruit. So we're going to go ahead and start to make the tacos. All right, so I am just going to break this into chunks. Oh, that is beautiful, flaky. Put some fish in the taco shell and really kind of fill it up with anything that you want. I'm going to start with some cabbage and some radishes and I think a little cilantro here, maybe a little avocado. Let's try a couple of these julienne uh, spring onions. And because that looks so good and like a great, oops, accompaniment to the fish taco. I'm gonna go ahead and put the grapefruit on and then I'm gonna put some of the creamy cilantro dressing right on top, put as much as you want. That is beautiful. And I'm gonna dig in while we can, okay? Mm, let's see, which end? Mmm. Mm. That is delicious. Get your recipes today at cookhealthytoday.com.